Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, a.k.a. Gamer55551. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I am back with a video review. Actually, this one being a double review, where I take a look at the game Rise of the Ronin for the PlayStation 5, PS5. Plus, I want to give my take on Godzilla Minus One, which I saw last night on Netflix. I didn't get a chance to watch that when that came out in theaters and all. And for parents out there, it's worth pointing out that Rise of the Ronin is rated M for mature artists only, ages 17 and up by the ESRB rating system, while Godzilla Minus One is rated um, PG-13. Um, so in terms of Rise of the Ronin and everything like that, I remember hearing about this when this game was announced back, I think when around year after, you know, the PS5 has launched. It was basically designed as an exclusive um, for that system and being developed by Koei Ninja, and, by Koei Techno and Team Ninja, basically the same folks who did um, Neo 1 and 2 for the PS4. And I think last year they did Wulong Fallen Dynasty, which was also on, you know, multiple systems, including the Xbox series um, X and S. Now, um, I, when it comes to their Souls games or their approach though, I always enjoyed their games um, the most. Not that I have anything against, you know, from software or anything like that. They are like the masters of Soul games. But I have always enjoyed, you know, Team Ninja's and Koei Techno's take on it. Mostly because of the fast-paced combat and some of the settings in it though. And after spending some time with Rise of the Ronin on the PS5, I would say this. Rise of the Ronin may not be perfect entirely, but what I do think is that if there's one thing it does take away from, say, like, from software's Elden Ring, it's the fact that this feels like a combination of everything Koei Techno has done with Neo 1 and 2 and Wulon Fallen Dynasty, much like how Elden Ring is a culmination of everything from software has done from Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, Bloodborne, Sekiron, Shadows Die Twice, and everything like that. So we'll start off with the pros for um, Rise of the Ronins. We'll do pros and cons, but we'll start first with the pros, though. And the pro I will say for this game is that in terms of combat, um, the combat is actually very good. This is one of the things about Team Ninja that I've always liked when it came to their games. I mean, like they do a really good job with the combat, and basically Rise of Ronin is no exception, though. I will say the combat, although it does take some DNA from Neo um, 1 and 2, um, this the combat I tend to feel like it's more like an advanced version or more of an enhanced version of Wulong Fallen Dynasty combat, where instead of having a high, medium, or low stance, you only have like, I think, one stance and everything like that. You do have a, you do have, you know, like a heavy attack and a light attack and all. You do have the ability to switch to two different weapons. You also can switch with different weapons in terms of like your bow, gun, or different other um, shooting weapons though. Um, and also the parry in the game, I do feel that the parry is definitely an improvement over Wulong's Fallen Dynasty one. Um, because mostly, because I've always had a hard time with parrying in terms of video games, and Wulong, I felt like there was a bit of a learning curve with this on that. Where Rise of the Ronin, on the other hand, is mostly I think you push like the try the square the triangle button. Yeah, I believe that's it, the triangle button. And if you time it right, you can block not only you can counter the, you know, what your enemy has done. You can usually tell that they're going when the when the right time to use the parry, mostly because of you know when you see sort of like a what appears to be the enemy doing a special move and everything like that. That usually is the right time to parry your character and all. But otherwise, though, I will say um, combat is done um, very well in the game. Once again, Koei Techno does a really good um, job with it. Uh, the next one is, and this is something that I've seen that Koei Techno has done with a lot of their games that they have released on basically their Souls-like type game, and that is the game still maintains a lot of the graphical options, which is pretty amazing, especially for a game, especially for this one being more in the open world style though. I mean, there are different graphical options, including the choice of balance. Now, some of that will be based on where your PS5 is hooked up to, whether what kind of TV or monitor it may be hooked up to. But nevertheless, I do like the fact that there are graphical options available. Although there are different types, including, you know, higher resolution or balance or anything like that, I always try to stick with performance mode because I rather have that smooth or at least smooth 60 frames per second over any um, graphical bells and whistles or anything like that. At least that's my um, take and everything. So, and, 
But still, nevertheless, I'm glad that they offered it, um, a graphical options and they are still here in, in case of Rise of the Rowan. And last but not least is basically the open world approach. For those who are not familiar, this game decides to follow the approach very similar to, you know, like what Ghost of Shishima did with this open world um, style of approach. And I will say the open world approach is not bad or anything like that. I mean, it's perfectly fine. There is stuff to do on the map, whether it's helping someone out or taking, clearing out a group of thugs or anything like that. There's still um, plenty to do um, in this game. And traversing is, I found it to be very easily. I mean, there are, you know, quick points where you could teleport to here or there. Otherwise, there are certain ways you get around, usually by horse or with the grappling hook, which you can use, which outside of grappling certain enemies and everything like that, you can use to sort of get around, you know, buildings or if you, when you eventually unlock the glider, that can help in certain ways. So, so in terms of the open world style of approach for this game though, it isn't bad or anything um, like that. So it certainly is not, it certainly isn't terrible in terms of Kobe Techno and Team Ninja taking the um, open world approach and everything. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to part two, which is the con. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of my video review of Rise of the Ronin. Um, so now that I gave you the pros, why don't I give you the cons in terms of my time with Rise of the Ronin. Now the first con I do want to talk about is the open world. Now, as I mentioned in the pros, I didn't think the open world part of the game is bad. I, I don't think it's, it's bad as a lot of people may think it is, and I still stand behind that. However, it also depends on whether you think this is a good or a bad thing. And the thing about the open world approach in terms of inside in Rise of the Ronin is the fact that it takes a page out of Ubisoft, which you can view that as either a good thing or a bad thing. A lot of that will depend on your view of how you look at Ubisoft's open world games and how they approach them, um, to be exact. Though A lot of it has to do with their stuff on the ground. Some might call the filters in terms of that, you know, getting to a certain spot to unlock everything and, er and everything like that. So it, it definitely does take a page from the Ubisoft open world formula, though. Again, that depends on your view. Either you're going to view that as a good thing or you're going to view that um, as a bad thing, though. Uh, the next thing I do want to talk about is the visuals of the game. And I will say for a PS5 game, Rise of the Ronin doesn't look bad or anything like that. I think it looks fine, even when playing in performance mode with the visuals um, lower a bit and everything. I still think the game um, looks good. That being said, though, when compared to say uh, compared, compared to say to another open world samurai game like um, Sucker Punch's um, Ghost of Shishima, I have to, I hate to say this, but I think Ghost of Shishima looks. Um, way better than, say, um, Rise of the Roman. And that has to do with the unique style of the game and the art style that really um, goes with it, though. So in terms of visuals, I will say Ghost of Tsushima definitely blows um, Rise of the Ronin um, completely out of the waters at all. Again, I don't think Rise of the Ronin looks bad. It's just not as good as, say, um, Ghost of Tsushima and all. And last but not least, I do want to talk about the enemies in the game. And while I don't think the enemies are necessarily bad or anything like that, I just feel like the en design of some of these enemies just don't look as good or as impressive as, say, other Koei Techno or Team Ninja games. And I'm referring to, say, Neo 1 and 2, uh, Wulong Fallen Dynasty, or the Ninja Gaiden series. I just feel like the enemies on those look more impressive, particularly with Neo 1 and 2 with the whole demon or gamma or onis and everything like that. To even Wulong Fallen Dynasty has some very um, interesting enemies though. I just feel like the enemy design for Rise of the Ronin just doesn't really look as impressive. It's not terrible, it's just not as good as say those other games from Koei Techno and um, Team Ninja. Overall, I would say Rise of Ronin is a good game and a good 
PS5 exclusive um, to be exact though. I still think it, it is definitely enjoyable, but it is mostly for those who enjoyed, you know, Koei's Techno's um, take on the Souls-like formula. At its best though, um, the combat is still good and still enjoyable. Hats off to Team Ninja on it though. Glad that they still kept the graphical options to make you choose how you want to play the game. I prefer performance. And I will say the open world approach isn't as um, bad as some folks make it out to be. But at its worst, I will admit that basically the open world approach does take a page out of the approach that Ubisoft is well known for, which again, that could be either a good or a bad thing. Um, the visuals, like I said, not terrible, but I'll be honest with you, Ghost of Shishima blows the visuals of Rise of the Ronin um, completely out of the water. And while I think the enemy variety isn't bad, I just don't think it's as good as, say, Koei Techno or Team Ninja's other games like Neo 1 and 2 or Wulong Falling Dynasty or even the Ninja Gaiden series um, for that matter. But in either case, though, I am enjoying Rise of the Ronin. I still think it's a good Souls-like game from Koei Techno and, or at least their take on the Souls-like formula, I know, and formula to be exact. And if you like Koei Techno's take on the Souls-like formula, then it is worth giving Rise of the Ronin um, a look and everything like that. It is a PS5 exclusive, at least for the time being, but it'll be very interesting to see if it comes to other systems though. If it does, my guess is that it probably will come to PC at some point. I don't know when it will happen or if it will happen, but given the direction we've seen um, Sony go with porting some of their games over to the PC, I do think it's only a matter of time before we see Rise of the Ronin um, come to the PC and all. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, I'll get to my third and final part of my double review. And this one is, I want to give my thoughts and my take on Godzilla Minus One, which I just saw last night on Netflix. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, with the Rise of the Ronin review now officially done, we'll get started with our part two of our double review. And this one is, or at least part three of this video, is my take on Godzilla Minus One, which I just recently saw last night on Netflix and all. And just in case I forgot, for parents out there, Godzilla Minus One is rated PG-13 here in the USA and all. Now, Godzilla, no doubt, is one of the most iconic figures um, out there in terms of pop culture or those who are into, you know, Japanese culture and everything like that. The original movies began back in the 50s and all, and it certainly has gained a following over the years and everything like that. And we've seen Godzilla also appear in Western media, and to be exact, while there were definitely those who were mixed on the 1998 Godzilla movie done by the director of Independence Day, Others, like, say, the Monsterverse from Legendary Pictures and Warner Brothers, had seemed to have done very well at the box office, despite Godzilla King of the Monster not doing as well as I think some may have hoped for. And including the last one, I think Godzilla X Kong, the new empire, did very well um, at the box office um, this year and all. But there was one that was sort of released, I believe, last year that unfortunately I didn't get a chance to see it in theaters and everything like that, but just definitely made its way onto Netflix was Godzilla Minus One, developed by the same, by the original studio that has started the Godzilla series since back in, you know, the 50s and all. And after I got a chance to watch it um, last night, I will say I can understand how this one definitely got, um, critical acclaim and it is definitely one I would recommend much watching for watching especially if you're a long time Godzilla fan or anything like that I'm not a long time Godzilla fan but I do enjoy some of the movies um here and there so in terms of this one I'll break it down to what I like and what I didn't like mix I'm not 100% sure in terms of what I like though I definitely like the setting for Godzilla minus one I definitely like the idea that it takes place um somewhat post World War II and everything like that. And it basically is looking at, you know, folks, you know, in Japan after, you know, World War II came, came to an end over there. And it focuses solely on that. While there is mention of American forces um, here and there, they don't play really a huge role or anything like that at all. In fact, their role is pretty much minor as this one's focused on, you know, 
the people in Japan, you know, the Jap Japanese mil Navy, you know, dealing with um, Godzilla um, in general and all. So it's, I de but I definitely like how that setting is done for this movie and all. So I definitely like how they approach this movie, especially with the post-World War II setting um, in Japan. I also do like the fact that it focuses on, you know, the human side of it, though, rather than just focus on just the monsters alone, which, depending on your view, some may or may not like that. But I still like it in terms of seeing, you know, some of the people struggle in range and even the main character who still has nightmares for the first time seeing Godzilla when he when he was about to you know charge up his plane and everything you know get his plane fixed and all and that and that stuff so it's certainly nice to see the human side and the reaction when they do see Godzilla especially one scene where he's stampeding um in into a city and everything like that and also I do want to point out that the dubbing in this movie is okay at its best. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's definitely um, okay and all. But still, I do, do think that it's nice that they focus on the human side of those who go through in terms of dealing with, you know, the reaction they get with Godzilla and all. And I will finally have to say, though, is that visually the movie looks good. And it's surprisingly, considering this didn't have like a huge budget or anything like that, but still, it definitely looked good and everything like that. Obviously, it's going to look different than what the original Godzilla movies back, I think, in the 50s or the 60s and everything. But still, it definitely um, looks nice. Um, Godzilla definitely looks somewhat like, somewhat like, you know, the Godzilla you might see from the MonsterVerse and all. But there are some differences um, here and there. But in either case, though, I do like, really like the visuals for this movie. And I think it looked really good. As far as what I didn't like or mix or not 100% sure about, I would say the only thing I could come up with, with see, after seeing this movie is that I wouldn't really go into this movie expecting it to be on the same scale as, say, um, the MonsterVerse is, you know, with, you know, Godzilla, Godzilla King of the Monster, Kong Skull Island, Godzilla vs. King Kong, or Godzilla X Kong. Um, the New Empire. I wouldn't really go into those. Those are more heavily Western blockbuster types. And don't get me wrong, I like those movies and all, but this is definitely is more geared towards, you know, longtime fans of the Japanese Godzilla and that kind of stuff, though. And it's definitely, like I said, it definitely focuses more on the human side, where the, those other films tend to be more focused on, you know, the monsters and everything like that, more focused on that one. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think that some of this is going to go come down to your preference and taste. So I will say it's still a good movie. Just don't approach this movie thinking you're going to be it's going to be on the same scale as say like the MonsterVerse movies or anything like that. Overall, I definitely enjoyed Godzilla minus one. I think it was definitely a good film and everything like that. I regret not seeing it last year, but I still glad that I finally got a chance to see it on Netflix and all. At its best, though, I will say the setting is really neat. I like the post-World War II setting, though. I do like the focus on the human side and some of the emotions that they show for this movie, though. And I will say for a movie that doesn't have a huge budget, the visuals in this were really good. I think that I got to give credits to the visual team that worked on this movie and all. At its worst, however, is that you're going to have to approach this movie somewhat differently, I would say. In other words, I would, like I mentioned before, I really, really, wouldn't really go into this movie expecting to be on the same scale as the MonsterVerse type of movies, as both of them have different styles and everything like that, though. As this one is more focused, I feel like it's more focused to those who enjoyed, you know, Toho, if I'm saying their name correctly, um, Godzilla movies and everything like that. If you enjoyed those movies, you'll probably enjoy um, Godzilla Minus One. But if you're going in expecting to see, expected to be on the scale of Godzilla X Kong The New Empire, you might be somewhat disappointed in that. But in either case, though, I still think Godzilla Minus One is a good movie. It's worth checking out. Um, currently, right now, I believe it's only available on Netflix. I might be wrong on that. It could have. It could appear on other streaming services and all, but if you have a Netflix though and you missed out on this, it's definitely worth checking out um, nevertheless. <clears throat> okay, um, this concludes my double review of Rise of the Ronin for the PS5 and my take on Godzilla um, Minus One. And again, these are my opinion. 
What are yours? What are your thoughts about um, Rise of the Ronin? Do you think that is a good Souls-like game from Koei Techno and Team Ninja? Do you think it's a culmination of everything they have done from Neo 1, Neo 2, um, to Wulong Fallen Dynasty and Ninja Gaiden though? Um, do you think the game is fun? Do you enjoy the combat in the game in any way? Are there things about it you didn't like? Do you think the visuals look all right? Or do you think Ghost of Tsushima's visuals look better? What are your thoughts of Godzilla Minus One? Did you see it in theaters when it came out or did you wait for it to, <coughs> excuse me, to see it on streaming service though? Do you like the setting in terms of the movie, the post-World War II setting and all? Do you think the visuals of the movie looks good despite not having a huge budget? Um, were you going in expected to this to be on the scale of what Godzilla x Kong: The New Empire was or were you not expecting that um, at all? Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you like this video, I hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos that put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to and feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through PayPal me. Patreon or Steam Labs. Links will be in the description of this video. Assume you're watching this on YouTube. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that'll be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. Bye!